Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. This time we're going to take a look at the Humble Diode yet again. But this time we're going to take a look at a very specific version of the diode, which is the Veractor. And the Veractor exploits uh, a phenomenon that all diodes possess, and that is, of course, capacitance. So let's start by having a look at the theory and how Veractors are constructed and what they do. A reminder of the operation of a diode then, so we have cathode and anode uh, consisting of N p-type material there. So normally when the diode is forward biased we would expect um, the uh, current to be flowing from right to left and there to be no depletion layer in between uh, the two uh, uh, N and p-type areas of the semiconductor. When the diode is reverse biased, in other words uh, it stops conducting, that's because um, there's a depletion layer created between the N and the P-type and that depletion layer is exactly what it says on the tin, it's depleted of charge carriers and effectively it becomes, as far as DC is concerned, it becomes open circuit. Now if we increase the reverse bias voltage, uh, so we increase the width of de the depletion layer and depending on the type of diode um, we can uh, increase that width more or less and of course that results in something which looks suspiciously like a capacitor and indeed all diodes have capacitance uh, to some extent some have very little some have uh, more and some have quite a lot the 1N4148 which is the uh, very common silicon small signal uh, diodes got four picofarads of capacitance measured at one megahertz and the 1N4007 which is a well-known uh, silicon rectification diode has about eight picofarads at one megahertz. Now Veractors, which is what we're talking about today, they harness that capacitance effect and they're constructed in such a way as to optimize the capacitance so the capacitance is a great deal larger. They have the symbol thus although occasionally you also see a symbol that looks a bit like that, although the one on the left is, um, in my experience, more common, although I have seen both. So Veractors then uh, operate as a capacitor, and as far as DC is concerned, they're open circuit, but to AC, uh, they're not open circuit, as is the case with all capacitors. So, how can we make use of this voltage-controlled capacitor, because essentially that's what it is? when the diode is reverse biased, we have a voltage control capacitor. Well, there's several ways to use it. We're going to look at three ways today. So the first one we're going to look at is a voltage controlled oscillator. So here we have a relatively straightforward a culpit style oscillator circuit. Just got a general purpose a transistor there on the right hand side, the 2N222. Uh, uh, we've got uh, 680 microhenry inductor and in parallel with that though we've also got the, the Veractor and the other bits to note really is we've got a biasing network with 33 and a 10k resistor for the base of the transistor and then over on the left hand side we've got a 10k pot feeding through a 47k resistor to the Veractor and that pot is to allow us to vary the reverse bias level uh, on the diode and the 100 nanofarad capacitor just to the right of it will stop any of that DC creeping through into the to the base of the transistor. So that's the general circuit. Um, on the breadboard it looks a little bit like this. I've just labelled a few of the components for you so it's, ho it's hopefully it's relatively obvious what's going on there. The two large uh, yellow capacitors are actually the a small value quite 2N2 and the very large the, the, the small much smaller blue capacitors are the 100N and the really tiny capacitor is the, the blue one center stage so the reason for the difference in size is simply working voltage and it's just happened to be what I had to hand and hopefully you can work out for yourselves the, the values of the resistors and finally the trim pot for doing control is um, the square blue uh, component on the, the centre left hand side. The diode uh, is labelled D1 and the transistor I've labelled Q1. So that's the breadboard layout. Let's now go and have a look on the bench. Okay here's the voltage controlled oscillator laid out on the breadboard as described in the circuit uh, diagram just now and uh, there's the display from the um, spectrum analyzer and you can see we've got a strong signal um, in the centre of the display um, 
centered around about 300 kilohertz at the moment and the bias voltage uh, on the uh, very cap is about 2.5 volts something like that so I'm just going to adjust that so first of all I'm going to uh, reduce it and you can see the spike is now moving to the left as the frequency drops and we've got about um, well it's roughly about 26 kilohertz per division so as you can see I've managed to go down there about 75 kilohertz and if I now increase the voltage I can easily get up to about 420 kilohertz there we're on about just on about 6.9 volts so that's the very cap uh, doing its job rather well um, and that's a voltage controlled oscillator which is a very common um, component in a lot of uh, a lot of homebrew uh, amateur equipment okay I'm just going to reconfigure that circuit and then we'll have a look at another um, use for this kind of circuit okay here we are back with the VCO uh, as before but with one slight modification instead of providing the very cap bias voltage from this uh, potentiometer I'm now providing it from my signal generator I get still through the 47k uh, resistor to, to present it with a reasonably high impedance and uh, what I'm going to do with the signal generator is produce a, a varying DC voltage to simulate uh, if you like some kind of audio modulation and I'm going to do it at a fairly low frequency so hopefully you're going to be able to see the frequency modulation actually going on so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to apply a 1 Hertz uh, signal to that and as you can see rather nicely there there is the the carrier wave is now moving about at the center point and obviously at one hertz that clearly wouldn't be audible but it is on the spectrum analyzer visible and if this were one kilohertz then you'd still be if you've got a spectrum analyzer that was fast enough you'd still be able to see that um, the, which is the, the effect of the frequency modulation so if I just go up to five hertz it becomes a great deal harder to see even at uh, 10 Hertz it becomes even more difficult but if I now add a, a second trace with a maximum hold you can see there fairly quickly that we've got that specific uh, width of frequencies and uh, that is effectively what the deviation would be now don't start doing the maths on this because that's a raucously wide deviation it's um, a rather a lot you wouldn't need anything like that amount for effective communication uh, this is purely for illustrative purposes but what you see in there you see in the very cap being used uh, to produce free uh, frequency modulation uh, on the VFO okay that's the voltage controlled oscillator and you've seen two variations on it you've seen this variation as drawn here where it's uh, the changing the value of the 10k potentiometer potentiometer results in uh, the uh, frequency of the oscillator changing and then I simply substituted the uh, 10k resistor uh, for um, supply from my signal generator so that we could have a look at how frequency modulation can be produced you wouldn't do it that way um, you'd find a better way to do it in, in a in a not a conventional circuit you probably wouldn't want to directly modulate the VFO uh, but hopefully you got the, the general idea of how frequency modulation works Here's a snippet of a circuit from a Midland 3001 which is a 1980s FM British CB radio and if you look um, sort of bottom centre you can say R163 100k resistor and that line that comes in through that resistor brings in the modulation from the uh, audio amplifier circuits from the microphone and feeds them straight into D110 which is the very cap and that's where the FM gets produced in that um, in that radio so that's a real live example of, uh, of FM modulation in a circuit okay let's move on then and have a look at another application for very caps so this is a voltage control filter and uh, quite a nice little circuit so what we've got going on here is we've got a filter with an input on the left and an output on the right uh, and it consists of uh, four inductors and actually three capacitors so we've got a fixed 420 picofarad on the right there but then we've got two uh, vary caps being driven 
by the same voltage divider and 47k resistor and the reason we've got two vary caps is that what we don't want here is any of the um, frequencies coming into the filter to force either of those diodes to become forward biased and start conducting because that could result in distortion so by putting two vary caps um, sort of nose to nose like that uh, we eliminate that problem completely because uh, that won't happen either way the disadvantage of course is that because we've now connected two capacitors in series we have halved the value of the capacitance available however it still works okay as we're going to see so that's a voltage control filter uh, on the breadboard really really straightforward um, input is on the left hand side there I've marked input I've covered I've put most of the values of the components on there for you and uh, the uh, 47k resistor is the, is the resistor sort of in, in the middle towards the bottom and the 10k trim pot providing the control voltage is uh, way across to the right there so that's the layout on the breadboard let's go and have a look at it on the bench okay here's the circuit as described on the slides just now on this part of the breadboard here so I've got the signal coming in from the uh, tracking generator here and it's taken off the end of the filter there back via an oscilloscope probe so we've got the various uh, inductors the four inductors one microhenry 4.7 4.7 one microhenry that's the capacitor here are the two diodes and there's the 47k resistor and I've got the 10k pot just across here for adjustment so let's now look at the current display coming off the spectrum analyzer we've got about 1.9 volts currently present um, in between those two diodes so that's the view from the spectrum analyzer and you can see it's uh, centered on about well, about 3.5 and a bit um, megahertz and we've obviously got that uh, bell curve response as you'd expect from a bandpass filter so adjusting the voltage then if I turn the voltage down we can see the region the pass region uh, lowering in frequency if I turn the volt so we just well just back there we're at about about 0.5 volts if I turn that up keep on going we get to well I'll stop there for the purposes of showing you that's about 5 volts um, so you can see I've got a voltage control filter and in this case the, the original circuit came from a uh, 3.5 megahertz uh, transmitter the 80 meter amateur band and obviously this is a potentially quite a handy voltage controlled um, filter for a, a receiver so as you can see it responds rather well so the very caps doing their jobs nicely or so I've led you to believe because they aren't very caps um, remember I said earlier on that all diodes display capacitance some more than others well these two are a pair of 18 volt zeners and uh, they've got quite a reasonable spread of capacitance as you can see if I was to replace those uh, with the the proper ver actors I'd get an even wider uh, frequency spread but don't think you need to necessarily go out and um, buy specific components for these these 18 volt zeners I bought because um, I needed one to repair a power supply and I had to buy a packet of 10 um, so I just thought I'd, I'd try them out um, because Zen is usually pretty good at this kind of thing and as you can see if I vary the um, the voltage in between them they do indeed um, behave like VAR actors and we're doing exactly the same process increasing the voltage or increasing the reverse bias voltage results in a reduction in capacitance and um, then vice versa reducing the gate voltage so if I reduce it now we get a increase in capacitance and consequent to uh, lower in um, passband frequency so there we go that's a voltage controlled filter okay well you've seen three uh, practical applications of a uh, of air actor diode there and I hope it's been useful uh, it's a component that I've not really had very much to do with in the past and I got a couple off uh, eBay 
and uh, had a bit of play with them and I've actually learnt loads and loads so again as I so often say on these videos I would encourage you to have a go and experiment because um, you'd be amazed how much you can learn. Um, thanks very much for watching if you've liked the video please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down please feel free to comment would be great if you could subscribe uh, and also perhaps um, uh, share so that uh, other people can find out about the channel that would help me it costs nothing to subscribe or to share but definitely helps me uh, have a quick look in the description uh, there are some links to to uh, to places where you can buy things and purchasing them through those links um, is a way of uh, supporting the channel in a small way and that would be great and I will make sure that anything at all that comes back through that will get ploughed straight back into the channel. Hope to see you on the next video.